Cormac McCarthy was a huge lover of physics, and today we're going to be talking about his thoughts on Albert Einstein, and they are a mixed bag, but they offer us not just revelations about physics or McCarthy's thoughts, but also a really cool connection between a major philosophical thinker and Albert Einstein. And in Stella Maris, McCarthy adds Einstein, first of all, as one of the colleagues of Alicia and Bobby's father. Obviously, they all worked on the Manhattan Project together. And McCarthy uses some framing techniques to speak through the father about Einstein. But the first quote of the day we're going to be looking at is from Alicia herself. And, and she says, quote, It wasn't just the quantum dice that disturbed Einstein. It was the whole underlying notion, the interdeterminacy of reality itself. He read Schopenhauer when he was young, but he felt that he'd outgrown him. Now, here he was back, or some would say, in the form of an inarguable physical theory. And, and Einstein was a huge lover of Schopenhauer. He had a massive portrait on his wall of Schopenhauer throughout his entire life. And this may seem like a wacky combination, but Einstein was actually really into philosophy. And Schopenhauer was one of his favorites. He would carry around a volume of Schopenhauer for years, and like people have always referenced it. And he himself have, has talked about Schopenhauer, mostly through the lens of free will, because both Einstein and Schopenhauer are determinists. They don't really believe in free will. However, that's what McCarthy is referencing in this quote, and we're going to unpack that right now. And so the quantum dice thing that McCarthy is talking about here is most likely a reference to Einstein's quote, God does not play dice with the universe. And this quote was a way for Einstein to express his discomfort discomfort with the inherently probable, probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. And so like in classic physics, objects have definite prob uh, properties, but in quantum mechanics, objects only have probabilities. And one of the most famous uh, examples of this is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which goes as we can't both know the position and momentum of a particle with ab absolute certainty, which is absolutely wild and mind-boggling stuff. However, Einstein believing in determinism and Schopenhauer and that whole reality was, was a young man's thing. This is very similar to men with existentialism and whatnot. But it's amazing with the advention of quantum mechanics, which we'll kind of get into more in, in a second. And guys, we're talking about me quantum mechanics now, but there are a ton, of, a ton more quotes about Einstein that aren't as deep as this. Anyway, quantum mechanics throws Einstein back into pessimism. And what was shocking to Einstein and to others about quantum mechanics is, as McCarthy says, it was an inarguable physical theory because um, quantum mechanics has a rich history now of empirical success and, um, and not just creating new technologies, but for probabilistic, excuse me, success in like experimental zones. And also, everyone, I have a bunch of new Cormac McCarthy shirts up. I'll be wearing them and repping them over the next you know, couple months. I'm designing a couple new ones, probably every single month. And so if you guys are interested, these are streetwear shirts. They aren't Gildan. And I also have a Cormac McCarthy newsletter. I'll be sending out a pretty sick blog post this weekend that you won't find anywhere else or won't be posted anywhere about Cormac McCarthy. So join that at the link down below. And that, let's hop now into our next quote about Albert Einstein. And the context of this scene is near the end of the novel when Bobby's kind of going through these kind of liminal space consciousness experiences moving in and out of memories. And he is remembering his father taught to him about his experience with Einstein. And that is this quote. And it starts with McCarthy saying that Einstein was not very good at math. And he loves saying this. He said this about Carl Jung also, that Jung was an idiot because he wasn't good at math. And hopping into the quote, or Einstein for that matter, speaking about his mathematic abilities. Back to the quote. He was the better physicist, of course. He had this extraordinary physical intuition, but he had trouble solving his own equations. Later, his problem was that he wanted to. He thought that it was a shortcut. I think it led him down the garden path. After general relativ relativity, he never did anything again. I knew him, sure, in the sense that anybody knew him. Maybe girled, Girdle did. His friends from Europe, Bezo, Marcel Grossman, before he became Einstein. And so what his father is referring to here is eventually he became a celebrity. And he's just saying that, like, I knew him as just like another physicist, just another guy that does math and physics. 
And it is true that Einstein really did start to try and solve his own problems, but he was able to do it. And he actually had a lot of help from other physicists and mathematicians like Marcel Grossman that McCarthy just mentioned. But the unified field theory that he was chasing never came to pass. And it's interesting. We're not going to look at this quote, but Alicia earlier references that her father um, actually went and to Einstein and like took up, got papers from him after his death and tried to take up his theory, his unified field theory stuff, which is a very ambitious project. And if it was proven correct, would like change a lot of aspects of our universe and how we think of ourselves. And it obviously led the way to like quantum mechanics and other things. So I guess it was effective, but it is implied when she was talking about, I think grabbing Einstein's unified field theory stuff is that's why the government is so interested in him. That's kind of one of the inherent aspects of the passenger and why they're after him. It's not just about the nuclear bomb stuff. It's that he knows something more, you know, something akin, but not to like Tesla's Nikola Tesla's conception of free energy. You know, the government would not want us to discover free energy because it would ruin the entire industry, industry, energy industry, and so many other things that we are reliant on the government because of. We would overnight become a lot more autonomous and would have a, and have a major pushback against the governing bodies that be that obviously have a vested interest in not letting us gain our autonomy. And to conclude this beautiful analysis, I have to tell you guys one of my favorite stories about being at university of all time. So I had this class with this woman and she is just beautiful, right? A Vegas nine, which means that unless you are from California or Florida, that they are a 10 wherever you're living. But she maybe wasn't the smartest because she would always, and I do this all the time, you guys, like I mispronounce people's names all the time, but she would, for, for instance, I remember on the second day of school, she went on this really long rant and she was talking about this guy named Socrates. And I was like, who the fuck is Socrates? And lo and behold, it was Socrates. And every single name that she mentioned, I never knew what she was talking about. Anyway, and for some reason, I, she liked me. Like, every single thing I ever said, like, she would laugh at. And, like, the whole class, like, really didn't like me. Like, this was in my, like, space cadet phase. And there would be, like, other women and students in the class, like, bullying me, like, saying stuff. Because, like, I was just, like, too in the stars, like, saying crazy stuff. Anyway, so I was so in the stars that, like, I didn't even get this girl's number. Like, I And I totally could have. It was already... 100% there. And so we go our separate ways and I never see her again. So like five years later, I'm at a random park in the hood in Las Vegas because I like to do like calisthenics. I do stuff on the rings and, and whatnot. And it's like one in the morning. And I'm running there because at this point in my life, I was also uh, involved in criminal activities. And so a, I, as I was waiting to go and be a part of one of these activities, I'm doing my calisthenics, like just getting ready, like killing some time. And I as I'm setting up, I see that someone's like reading something on a bench, like not too far away. And I'm just like, okay, whatever, like, that's cool. So then at, I have to go to the bathroom at some point during the workout. And as I'm walking back, I see that it's her. And I'm like, oh my God, hello. And of course she remembers and we, and we start talking. And I'm like, what are you reading? Like, wh what are you reading? And she's reading a book of, Ein like a book of essays written by Einstein and like papers. And the first thing I asked is like, do you understand anything in there? And she's like, no, I haven't understood a word. And I was like, why are you reading it? She's like, people said that I should. And so we start talking and things start like heating up and I have to go though. And the problem is, is because of these activities I was a part of, I didn't have a phone on me. I wouldn't carry a phone on me. And so I, I'm like trying to explain to her that like, I'm trying to go and do something, but I can't, I'm not going to like tell her obviously what it is. I actually probably should have. And so I'm like, yo, can you meet me? at this restaurant in like two hours, I'll take you out. Like I explained, don't have a phone, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, I'll see you there. Two hours later, she wasn't there. <laughs> and I missed out on this beautiful opportunity or not. What was even a bigger synchronicity about all that is that like the week or two before that, I had been reading a book on classic physics and like seeing that girl there randomly and, we're, and, and her reading Einstein in a city of 3 million people at 1 a.m. and at a small park with a pull-up bar. It's absolutely insane. And she stood me up. So maybe she wasn't real at all. Maybe that was just all a hallucination. All right, the physics videos aren't going to stop. Get a t-shirt if you want. Join, join the newsletter. Follow me on social media, and I will see you guys in the next video.